This program is made possible by the generous partners of Dwayne Miller Ministries. Stay tuned for a message that will strengthen your faith. Get ready for insightful teachings, uplifting testimonies, and practical wisdom that will encourage you to live in victory. Welcome to Today with Dwayne and Cameron Miller. Good morning, Pastor Dwayne here with my beautiful bride, Cameron, and we want to welcome you to our broadcast today. We have an exciting show for you this week. You know, sweetheart, there's a lot of uncertainty in the world right now, and a lot of people are struggling remaining in faith because they're looking at the election, they're listening to pundits, they're watching the polls, mm -hmm. and they're, I hear believers talk about being in fear. Yes. Well, we're going to tell you this week how to live prophetically in days of calamity. You see, we cannot be moved by the practical things we see. Mm -mm. We are moved by the prophetic words that God says. God's Word has established you, and He did not give you the spirit of fear. That's right. We're going to be talking primarily out of Psalm 37 all this week on living prophetically in days of calamity. But first today, we're going to start out with a teaching from beautiful Cameron that she shared with the church just in an opening this past Sunday, and you're going to be very blessed, and I'll be chiming in. So let's pray. Remember, call the number on the screen for prayer, or send us your prayer request to DwayneMiller.com. Father, in Jesus' name, I take authority over this atmosphere, and I speak faith, faith, faith to every viewer. We cancel the spirit of fear, doubt, worry, unbelief. We cancel that assignment, and we say, receive the full measure of faith and act on that full measure of faith that you have been given by Holy Spirit in and through the Word of God. For faith comes by hearing and hearing by the Word. And we say our viewers are going to hear the Word this week and it is going to increase their faith in Jesus' name. Amen, amen. and amen. <clears throat> I just happened to think as I was uh, getting ready to turn this over to you about that great, great Word of Faith teacher of yesteryear, Dr. Frederick K.C. Price, and his program was called Ever Increasing Faith. And that's what we want you to receive this week, ever increasing faith for these days of calamity. It is true the world is getting darker, but God's ecclesia is getting brighter and more powerful than ever. Sweetheart, I want to turn this to you. Share with our people what you shared with our church on Sunday that moved our people so very much. Before I do, I, I think the theme, the song theme for this week, it just came to me just as you were praying. Do you remember the song we sang at our church growing up? Uh, I think it's called Standing on the Promises. Oh, yeah. And it says, um, resting in my Savior as my all in all. Yes. Standing on the promises <clears throat> of God. Mm -hmm. And when we are standing on those promises, we can rest. Yes, absolutely. And so that's such a sweet song. And if you don't know that song, I encourage you to look it up on YouTube. Mm -hmm. And I encourage you each week to begin your day listening to that song and let that be your anthem mm. that you are resting. And when we're resting, we're not worrying. We're not doubting. We're mm -hmm. not fearing. We're at total peace with everything around us. Yes. So I encourage you to do that. I saw an article on Facebook that said that there has been now a scientific proven fact. It was a neurological and neuroscientific study that showed that gratitude overrides anxiety in our brains. Mm. They went on, the same study said that it has also been shown to override addiction. And mm. that would be addiction from anything. It's a, a stronghold that you have. It could be a drug addiction, could be a, a sexual perversion addiction, a habit, whatever it is. And I just began dwelling on that and, I, and my, a study came via Holy Spirit through this article. And I was thinking, you know, could it be that the Lord via His Word was on to something mm -hmm. when He continues throughout the Scripture to tell us to cast all of our care upon Him? Because, I'll get to the because in just one second, but it's doubtful that you're going to find a scientist, you might, who is a believer, to admit that the true process of this, by doing so, by taking your gratitude and overriding these things, by doing so, what you're doing is you are remaining in gratitude, mm -hmm. thereby shifting the weight of the world, the weight of the addiction, 
off of your brain and onto the Savior, your source. That's ultimately what's taking place. Wow. Which is God's intended and perfect alignment. This is the only way to survive 100% successfully in this fallen world, which we are in but not of, where he then becomes the source of it all. Mm -hmm. He is what you're standing on. His promises are what you're standing on and resting in, whereby he has your health, your wealth, your influence. He has your ear, your heart, and your trust. This is the status a son, an intimate, resides in. And we have talked about sons and intimates quite often over the past few weeks and months. That is the ultimate level of maturity spiritually. By remaining constantly grateful, your glass is full. This white glass here, it's completely white, inside and out, top to bottom, stem to stern. It is full when your glass is full the enemy has no room now let your glass obviously be your heart your spirit your mind your being your whole flesh your whole self when we are praising when our hearts are running over with gratitude there is no room for worry doubt fear Mm -hmm. unbelief in other words the list could go on i boiled it down to those because it's anything contrary to the word Mm -hmm. When we are praying in the Holy Spirit, also there is no room for your sin nature to rise up. That's right. When we are intimate with the Father, there is no room also for failure. Mm -hmm. When your glass is full of faith and you see the son or the daughter missing from the church pew, your faith, your supernatural vision instead sees them in place serving the Lord. So what is happening to you at that moment is exactly what this neurological study showed. You are transferring the worry that you have and replacing it with faith. Therefore, when you see that missing seat there where your son or daughter should be serving the Lord, instead of wringing your hands and worried out in fear, Your supernatural spiritual vision of faith sees them sitting there serving the Lord. Therefore, you rise up with praise. That's how this works. Mm -hmm. When your glass is full of faith and you see the lack in your bank account or your health, whatever it is that's lacking, you fill in your blank. It's all covered under the cross. So there's nothing that you've gone through or are going through at the present that this does not apply to. Your supernatural vision, if your cup is full of the word and faith, sees blessing and restoration regardless of the issue. So I did a little illustration with this Sunday. Let me move my stuff just a moment. just to kind of give us a tangible thing to visualize. This is the cup that I was talking about. The white represents full of the word, full of faith, to the brim. When we add our trust and rest in God, then he activates and our cup runs over. Mm. And it remains so. Keep it remaining so. Add Mm -hmm. more of the word. Mm -hmm. Add more of his promises. Keep adding daily as you go along. Don't let it be a one and done. Mm -hmm. It's a constant. Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. Yes. Always be in the word. That means always be adding God and the rest and the trust Mm -hmm. to your cup and let it always be an overflowing situation. Mm -hmm. God always overflows. Yes. With his blessing and with his promises. Thank you, sir. Hallelujah. These biblical principles are real. This word is not just to give you a comfort and an emotional temporary high. Oh, boy, you better know it comforts. Yes, it does. Yet, if received and worked, the work is when you allow God to fill. Mm -hmm. And your words confess. That is also the work. Then the comfort, which can sometimes be temporary, 
is transferred to a permanent status where the comforter is now there versus just comfort. The eternal yoke destroying that we read about in Jeremiah 30, verse 8. Burden removing, Isaiah 10, 27. Miracle working power of God in us and mm -hmm. for us. So I'm going to tell you something. If you reach out to me and I give you a word to stand on, and I, when I say me, that's any pastor. I'm just going to use me as an example. When you reach out to anyone and they give you a word to, to stand on, to declare verbally, to decree the outcome of your life, after that word is given, after that direction is given to you, we don't want to hear, oh, that means so much to me. <laughs> Thank you. You just blessed my heart. You know, that's no different than me handing you a Kleenex when you sneeze. <laughs> You're not getting the power in that. You're not understanding. I'm not handing you a Hallmark card. Mm -hmm, that's right. Full of fluff. That's good. <laughs> I'm not handing you a Kleenex when you sneeze. And don't call me or anyone else to pray if you heard a tornado is headed toward your house, and when you get in touch with me, I tell you, based on the word of God, you have the right and the ability to open your front door and tell that beast to get out. Mm -hmm. And I mean it. I mean that that's what you are physically <coughs> to do. Yet you chuckle as if I just told you a cute little childish story. <laughs> and there you remain, glued to the radar, hands wringing wet, in fear, afraid to go to sleep. Again, this word is real. This word mm -hmm. works. No matter what your situation, when you're given a decree to declare over your house, your home, whatever it may be, your family, you do so mm -hmm. knowing that it is accomplished. That's right. And your worry goes out the window. You make it go out the window. Mm -hmm. During my pit season, which we've talked about a lot, when I said that I praised my way out of the pit, I did. This is the gratitude that I am referring to here. What keeps your glass full and overflowing, what keeps your eyes on him and your trust in him alone is this gratitude. No matter what happens, you praise. So you turn those, for instance, when I talked about your child not sitting in the pew, instead you see them there, so praise rise up rises up in you versus worried out and fear. I thanked God daily for many things in my life that most take for granted, and I do still. I thanked God for the very shower water that I had. I thanked Him for the house that was warm and comfortable. I thanked Him for the food I had on my table. I thanked Him even for the ability to go to the grocery store of my choice and get the items of my choice. I thanked him for the ability to read his word, to be able to see it, and for even having his word in my hands, as there are those who do not. For the ability to have a body free of pain that worked as it should. And may I add also, daily I call for that body to be renewed like the eagles, mm -hmm. and my youth <coughs> renewed as the word promises. Yes. Do you have something? Mm, don't okay. go ahead. On and on I could go with that. And we've said this before, but it bears repeating. You never know God is all you need until he is all you have. When he is what you want, he sees to it that you get what you want. Amen. There are times when believers have their heart attitude right. That portion is in faith, but their words contradict that. Mm. They get alone in the shower or the car, whatever it may be, and the flesh cries out of desperation to be stroked, to be comforted, and our words often reach out to appease our flesh through moanings, complaints, worried out fear, the buts, the what ifs, the I can't take it anymores. And what this does seems trivial and harmless, yet what we have done is kill the power of our confession. Mm -hmm. So don't kid yourself, it is not harmless, mm -hmm. albeit the enemy will convince you that it is. That's right. As a result of that kill, we have come into agreement with the world and not the word. Mm -hmm. We have come into agreement with the situation and the power it holds. We, by putting these ifs, ands, or buts in, 
have actually butted heads with the anointing, the power. This boils down to the fact and the root that we have come into agreement with the enemy. And that's not a good place to be. Make no mistake, don't be fooled. Have you ever yourself seen it in yourself or seen it in others? Someone walking in total victory with a victim mentality, vocabulary, a beaten down persona? We don't see that, mm -mm, do we? Mm -mm. If we see that, we know something's wrong. We right. know they're not in victory. In those private moments when we stroke our flesh and get into self-pity, and self-pity is a spirit, mm -hmm. and you need to cast it down, and you have the ability to cast mm -hmm. it down. There are three that hear, even when you're in your private place. Yourself, the enemy, and God, all three hear. By you hearing it, you are creating a double-minded man. Look up the verse that speaks of a double-minded man and what that man will receive. Nothing. Mm, that's right. It's off the table. Nothing. When you are sowing words of worry, doubt, fear, they will harvest. Because whatsoever you sow will be reaped. That's right. Everything produces after its own kind. You then cancel your words of faith. You then have weakened your stance of faith, creating an atmosphere within, within yourself, of confusion and weakness. That's not a good place to mm -hmm. be. That is not a place of victory. That is not a place that a soldier, a warrior stands. By the enemy hearing it, we are giving him the win. He gets the point for that round. We let him know, yes, he's making an impact. Yes, he's affecting us. Yes, we're giving him place. Yes, we are allowing him back in the game. Yes, we're letting him know that he is no longer under our feet, but he instead now is lording over us. Mm. That is not the way that ought to be. Right. And we are letting him know that we're caving, we're weakening, and we're about to give up. Ultimately, by him hearing, we have handed him, and I, listen to me closely on this, by him hearing those what you think are harmless words, you have handed him the key to enter and remove anything or anyone he so desires from your shelter. Mm. That shelter in Psalm 91 that we have talked about so often, the shelter of the Most High, that protective bubble, that Holy Spirit witness protection mm -hmm. that God has created to totally encompass you. God has not made a crack for that. You have mm -hmm. giving him, that beast, the key to enter in and take what he would like. That's, that's serious business, yes, if time. you ask me. Yes. <coughs> This is precisely how the enemy stole my life, as it were, mm. in 2014. So that's why I'm so adamant about you getting this, because I walked this walk. And had I known what I know now, that enemy could not have penetrated my shelter. My that bubble would not have been popped. Mm. I was a believer. I lived morally right. Had anyone questioned my believership, I would have probably been offended. However, I was blind to this truth, the truths I'm giving you today. Therefore, I was blindsided and hit. But, praise God, no more. Mm -hmm. Via the word, via the very teachings that I'm giving you today and what we've been giving you for a long while now, via the word that I read and declare and know for my own self every day, I am back and I am through Christ, through that power, through that anointing, taking it all Hallelujah. back. Hallelujah. Praise God. Mm. As long as we have fellowship with that foul spirit of self-pity, we will be defeated and have defeated lives. And I can testify to that. By God hearing our self-pity, that was the third one that hears. By God hearing our self-pity and negative confessions, we have canceled faith. Mm. 
Without faith, it is impossible to please God. He only hears faith. Yes. So, therefore, we have shut him out. He did not leave us. We left him. Our opened door is now at the disposal of the enemy. Our gifted shelter has been compromised, mm -hmm. and it's us to blame. Look yes. in the mirror. I had to look in the mirror. It was not God that caused that entrance. It was myself. When you're reading scripture and you come across a promise, it puts it into a different perspective. For me, if I flip it, if I turn it around, for instance, the verse that says the just shall live by faith. I flipped that and I read it back this way. They die by unbelief. Mm. Now that's pretty powerful, isn't it? The next verse that we all know, without faith, it is impossible to please God. Flip that. With faith, we please him. Yes. Words, confessions of worry, doubt, and fear cancel our faith, even one. When we talked about flipping the verse just now, let's flip this illustration. The glass is full. In this case, what was the hand of God is now poison. This was the hand of God. Now let's pretend it's poison. We're going to flip that script. Worry, doubt, and fear is in here. It's like poison. And we lose mm -hmm. what we had worked so mm -hmm. to keep. That's right. It's killing it. Mm -hmm. And it spills out and it's gone. Don't fool yourself into thinking that no one has heard, so what difference does it make? After all, I'm human. God knows my heart. I used to use that excuse regarding a lot of things. It doesn't work. Mm -hmm. That's right. A lot of people, when they're talking about giving or tithing, they say, God knows my heart. He knows <laughs> I could if I would. Well, with that, what does the word say with that one particular item? Give and it will be given. Good measure, pressed down and running over. Speaking of flipping scripture to see the opposing outcome, flip that one. With God, all things are possible. Amen. Flip that one. Faith without action is dead. Test me in this and see will I, if I will not open the windows of heaven and pour out such blessing you won't have room enough to receive it. Flip that one. Mm -hmm. You have no argument, not where the word is concerned. If your actions, your motives, your views, your words, your flesh does not line up with the word, there will be consequences. And it's not because God is a God who punish, is, punishes us mm -hmm. to be what he called us to be. That's right. But it is because his word works. Mm -hmm. Without it, he will not back it. Without faith, it is impossible to please God. Mm -hmm. Did your parents reward you when you were growing up for cleaning two-thirds of your room if they asked you to clean it all? Follow his word and be blessed. Get outside of that shelter, that protective place, and it's now on you. That's right. You're then responsible. Faith is the key that opens the floodgates of heaven. For us here on this seemingly demonically oppressed fallen world, Faith breeds gratitude, joy, strength, wisdom, favor, blessing, protection from harm and illness. Flip it. Oppose, ignore, bypass, take for granted the words of God and kill it all. Mm. For the remainder of this year, we certainly feel that there's a door. We feel it very strongly. Someone may ask, well, do you have scripture to back that up? I feel we do. We base this feeling and and, and word from the Lord on Psalm 124 that's proof that the enemy attempted or succeeded in something else there would be no need to say had it not been mm -hmm. for the Lord right <coughs> the devil has never in the history of mankind been so bold he used to take the back door and slither in quietly and take his prey without notice not unlike a python with poor vision had to rely on his forked tongue to trick and manipulate and smother in order to capture. Now he stands erect, 
marching in with pride. Mm -hmm. And the Lord wanted me to emphasize that word pride. Mm -hmm. Being praised by those who inhabit our White House, who are the wealthiest industrialists, who are the most admired singers and performers, who openly worship him on stage and screen. But had it not been Hallelujah. for the Lord, mm -hmm. and I will add, he had to, back in the day, enter the back door because the body of Christ was guarding the front door. Mm -hmm. But even then, we failed to guard the back, and eventually the front was left unguarded. And here we are. God never leaves us unprotected, however. There's good news. He warns through Holy Spirit, His Word, His prophets. Take this warning. Be a son who knows the Word. Born again, your heart is on Him. Two, baptized in Holy Spirit, you are submitted to Him. I'm going to go through this fast as I can. Three, grateful to tithe, therefore you trust Him. Mm -hmm. Four, no nothing shall come near your dwelling. Mm -hmm. You rest in His complete covering. Hallelujah. Thank you, sweetheart. What a powerful message, what a powerful show, what a powerful illustration. Whatever you're full of, whether it's the word or worry, doubt, and fear, activates God or the enemy in you mm -hmm. to produce either for the glory of the kingdom or the kingdom of darkness. So take this message to heart and stay filled with the word of God and full of faith and let it be your confession. Thank you for that. What a great job. We're going to come back tomorrow. We're going to be talking about living prophetically, taking this illustration and practically putting it to work in your life, living prophetically in days of calamity. We're living in uncertain times. But listen, the Word is certain. And when you confess the Word, you are certain. And you control the atmosphere and the environment you live in. No more fear, but full of faith. Listen, God bless you. Call someone and tell them to join us every day at 4.30 and 10 a.m. right here on VTN. And until tomorrow, you have a blessed and wonderful day. We'll see you tomorrow on VTN. God bless. To contact this ministry, visit our website at www.dwaynemiller.com. You can email us at info at or send your letters to Post Office Box 1331 Cabot, Arkansas 72023. We would love to pray for you. If you need prayer, please call 888-997-2387. Please join us in person at The Edge Church on Sundays at 1030 a.m. We are located at 6702 TP White Drive, Cabot, Arkansas, 72023. This program is available to watch on demand. Visit our website, YouTube channel, or the following streaming platforms to catch up on any episodes you may have missed. To stay connected with us, follow us on social media. Find us on Facebook at Dwayne Miller Ministries or on X at Dr. Underscore Dwayne Miller. This program was made possible by the generous partners of Dwayne Miller Ministries. If this broadcast is a blessing to you, please consider partnering with us. You can text GIVE at 501-237-5676 or give online at www.dwaynemiller.com. Thanks for watching Today with Dwayne and Cameron Miller.